come together on this Friday, the 21st of August already. And uh, today in the life of the church, we remember St. Pius X, who was the Pope. Um, I think probably not notable for many things, but something that affects all of us even today is lowering the First Communion age so that children by the age of seven could receive First Communion. And so it is with great joy that we come together to thank God for all his goodness to us, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together to praise God for all his goodness to us, we take a moment first calling to mind our faults and our failings. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many there were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, your flesh grow over you, cover your skin with skin, and put spirit in you so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I would have been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say to the spirit, thus says the Lord God, from the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. 
Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open the, your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, those whom he has redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from the land, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They went astray in the desert wilderness, the way to an inhabited city they did not find. Thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits He rescued them, and He led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and His wondrous deeds to the children of men before He satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. my God, guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We look at that first reading as the Lord calls the prophet Ezekiel to preach to those dead bones and as he prophesies, the bones begin to rattle and shake and stand up. And then God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the spirit. And it says, from the four winds, come, O spirit. And we remember the book of Genesis, when the spirit of God blew across the earth like a wind. And slowly life comes in the book of Genesis and the creation story. And as Ezekiel preaches to the spirit over these bones, they begin to get flesh and vein 
and they come to life. We can at times in our own personal life be in a valley of dead bones, can't we? We wonder sometimes what's happening around us, maybe what's happening to us. Everything's changing and changing quickly. Will it last or will it change again? For some people, there can be a great sense of despair. Emotionally, spiritually dead. Today's first reading, and followed by the Gospel, reminds us that it's the Spirit of God that can give new life, that can bring those dried bones that were carried and placed in that valley back to life and back to action. And they weren't just bones, were they? The bones stood up, and it was a huge army that stood there before Ezekiel. Strong, ready for action. The Spirit of God can renew our strength and can bring our faith back to action. How? I wish I knew I could write a book then this parish would be sitting pretty for a few years. I don't have the answer. It's going to be unique to each of us. How the Spirit touches me and how the Spirit touches you will be very different. But this I do know. We have to be willing to let it. We have to be willing to let the Spirit come, to listen to the prophecy. And what is that prophecy? What is it that we're being told? To love God with all our heart and to love our neighbor as ourself. How much fuller might my life be if I could let go of anger and grudge and prejudice. There's times we'd like to think we aren't, but we're only kidding ourselves. To let go of those things that hold me back from allowing the Spirit to re-enkindle that flame in my heart, the way it brought life back to these bones. Let us pray. We pray for the Church throughout the world that she may always preach the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our President and all world leaders, our allies and our enemies alike, that they may work for peace in the world, that they may put the needs of the people whom they govern first, acting with justice and equity for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, for those in hospitals and nursing homes, and for the many people who look after, care for, and visit the sick, we pray to the Lord. We remember in our prayers those cities throughout our country right now who are continuing to experience terrible violence, that somehow the Holy Spirit may touch the good and the bad alike so that the residents of a lot of different places in our country right now may know quiet and peace, we pray to the Lord. And for the intentions for which this Mass is being offered, for the intentions here at St. Mary's St. Peter's Parish, for the intentions that have come to us from St. Paul's and from St. Joe's up in Lee Center, from St. John the Baptist and Transfiguration on the other side of town, and for the people and the intentions of St. John the Evangelist in Camden, St. Pat's in Taborg, and St. Leo's in Holland Patton, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we place these petitions at the foot of your altar this morning as we begin our day celebrating your divine love. We ask that you hear these prayers through the intercession of your servant, Pope St. Pius X. And if it be your will, we ask that you answer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Please join in the singing of number 259 in the Missalette, We Have Been Told, number 259. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all good and good of all his holy church. Receive with kindness our oblations and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence and receive them with the spirit of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with 
Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your countenance. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Pope Pius X, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so together as one family we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each of you. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, 
that by the power of this heavenly table we may be made constant in faith and be of one accord in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the living of our lives. Thanks be to God. If I don't see you tomorrow, have a nice weekend. You too, Father. Please join in the singing of number 298, Jesus Christ by Faith Revealed. Jesus Christ by